the the study, uh, the four studies that we have been doing for the past two years is, is you know, this, as the president mentioned, is covering many of the initiatives in the education sector. This first one is really on on uh, uh, the RA ten ninety three. And uh, as you know, it's just uh, implemented, and uh, uh, the, we tried our very best to get information that is useful for to provide us uh, some kind of an assessment on on how it, uh, it's going in the first year of its implementation. I'm not the only one doing this. Uh, the president is part of the study team, and and uh, Miss uh, Ortiz, uh, Miss Pilad, and Miss Arauz. Uh, Okay, so this is the background, uh, the outline. I should uh, be following in the very standard, standard. Uh, and let me just go through. I have supposed to be doing this in 20 minutes. And it's about what 40 slides, so two slides per. So the objective is to really collect insights and to give us. I think the the board has the board of the PID has, has asked us to give. Uh, uh, and uh, some kind of an update of what's happening to this. Uh, this is a very controversial law. Uh, as you may know, in the discussion, the economic team was, was against the law, but the president decided to push through with the law. So that's, 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 that's the background. So we're trying to know how it's implemented, what's on. So insights and the, and, and the, the study and then the document, the actual implementation, is, uh, the, uh, to try to check on the beneficiary targeting and um, uh, the resource inputs for the program and procedurals, matters, and how the, the program is implemented. Of course, the real view is by trying to find out what can be, how it can be done to, to improve implementation. That's, that's the, always the objective of many of the PID studies. What can we recommend to uh, better, uh, for the program to better achieve its objectives? So in the assessment, always uh, in process, we call this process assessment, we always look at this on terms of three things. One is the assessment of the program, two is the theory uh, sound, plausible, and is it uh, objectives really uh, uh, achievable? And as, uh, the next one is uh, service delivery, and, and how, how is it be th being utilized by supposedly target beneficiaries? And the assessment of the support of the program. So that's basically the three things that we ask in any of the process evaluation that we do. So policy background, this is the, if you are not uh, very keen on the, on the uh, student, uh, STUFAP, student financial assistance program, uh, in 2010, there are only uh, uh, the STUFAPs on, on, on many tar supposedly targeted for the poor and all of that. But in, in, in 2012, there was a uh, there was a very important in innovation, which is actually targets the four piece families with with high school graduates, providing them with a grants in aid. And this is a very important program because the first time this is the pro first time that the program provides uh, uh, living allowance besides the tuition. So this is the biggest and the most ambitious uh, in terms of allowance. And as I said, uh, there was only even an, even an, an issue whether this program. Uh, is uh, set in the right tone given that the full scholarships of the other program only gives half of the what's given here. So, uh, which we like because if you, we said that if you want to target the poor, then you give them full amount. It cannot be just tuition because uh, uh, they have to leave house and, 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 and to, to avail of tertiary education. That's essentially the, uh, the what the program. And, uh, Towards the discussions of that, we were trying to, in 2015, there was a law that was passed uh, called Unifast Law. Essentially, that, rationali uh, that rationalizes uh, how do you finance students. So basically, we have three things there. In principle, we have, uh, we have, a, uh, uh, we have scholarships for the brightest and grants in aid for the poor, which is basically the prototype of that is this GPPPA and loans for everybody else. So that's, that's what the law says, except that the law has never been uh, given funding. So it was just right principles with no funding. And uh, in tw come 20, 2017, it comes the free tuition law. Free tuition, law, free tuition is a very popular uh, policy. Uh, we move against it because it actually torpedoes the, the initial initiative of, of uh, scholarship for the brightest, grants in aid for the poor. And, because the pre-tuition law doesn't, so long as you are, you are, 
you are uh, you are admitted to a state university of colleges, you get free tuition regardless of your income. So what is said that we don't have that kind of money. So so we are always been saying that it should be targeted if you have to uh, increase access, you target it for the poor. That's the strength, that's the prison law and the implementation of that. Uh, in 2017, when the law was provided, I uh, came out with uh, four components. One is the free tuition for the public education, free t t as, uh, together with that free technical vocational education as well. And tertiary education subsidy, this is for the private school intended for the poor in private schools and student loans program. So there was, uh, and uh, I will try to describe, this is the law that we are trying to assess. Okay, so this is the objectives of the law is in increased participation rate. That's one, of course, but uh, uh, it says that it gives equal opportunity to quality tertiary education. So that's, those are the key terms, equal opportunity and quality. To and priority students who are academically able and who come from poor families, that's the other objective. Uh, supposedly optimizing utilization of government resources. So inadequate guidance and uh, provide adequate guidance and incentives to and channeling Filipinos to their career choices. So that, 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 those, are, those are the principles that the law is supposedly impl uh, implementing. And complementary laws for public and private. So uh, I think you, you will find out that it, the law itself, uh, as it's designed, is a mixed bag. Uh, it's, it's one contradicting with the other. Uh, so we'll see. This is what I've said already, this is the components of the law. So the universal uh, access to quality education supposedly uh, embodied in two things, the free tuition for issues and LUs and other fees and state-run TVI, so that's the other one. So uh, we're not able actually to look at this, this other part. We only look at the, the higher <coughs> education part. Uh, for the tertiary education subsidy, we're able to uh, interview some of the uh, of the private schools, but this is still the very much much late, much much uh, later in implementation. So you have tuition. Uh, the TES one is tuition and other school fees in private high schools and private and LG operated TVIs and all allowance for books, supplies, transportation, and uh, so this is basically uh, a for the tier two. This is basically trying to adapt the GPPA where you provide. Uh, uh, allowances, Roman board, so it adapts that one because we post that if you are targeting the poor, that should be part of the program. You cannot just give them vision because that will not work. And there is a special uh, attention for uh, children with disability and even uh, assistance for taking uh, professional licensure examinations. Those are added uh, for the TES. Okay, for the student loan program, uh, there are two. You have a short term, like for example, students uh, who cannot pay for the tuition have to take a loan, but they have to pay for the loan within the sem or the semester or year uh, within the university. That's a very common loan that's been taken by students. Then you have uh, 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 ex ex review of expenses for uh, for for licensure examination. So that's 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 the other thing that uh, and uh, the, uh, I should say the long term loan, of course, that we know that you have to. Of, of for the whole program, uh, uh, complete completing the program. So, that, uh, so let us try to describe uh, describe the the whole education system in a nutshell. So basically, we have 88% uh, in terms of HEIs, 88% of private, 5% are EUCs, and 6% are EUCs, and one are other public. So that's basically the distribution. Here's the enrollment. Enrollment rate, uh, there's a problem actually, we have been citing this uh, problem in the enro enrollment data. CHED data tells us that there is, uh, uh, of course this is a longer series. From 1994, seven, uh, this share of pri private is, is, uh, is 79, uh, going down to 53 by, by, about, by about last year. And the public is rising from 21 to 47. That's the, that's the CHED data. Uh, you will find out that uh, the share from the APs, the household survey data, is entirely different. It's more like more public than private. The only thing that is consistent in this data set is that the share of the private sector is declining. But in terms of levels, they are not agreeing. Uh, I don't know what's the, what's the uh, we cannot resolve the issues about this, uh, why this is inconsistent. Okay, 
So the other thing that we'd like to mention that before uh, 2014 to 2015, the uh, recipients of student financial assistance programs are very very little proportion total enrollments about uh, two percent three percent in 2014 uh, when the PDAF was rendered unconstitutional it jumped because all those PDAF funded scholarships went to chat so that's basically how it uh, how it jumped to from 50, 60 70 thousand students to 300 thousand almost 400 thousand students in 200 that's basically the story of that. That, that, that that's the the proportion of um, of, of students uh, getting uh, some form of uh, student financial assistance. Okay. So what did uh, we do in the methodology? Uh, this is a, a qual mostly qualitative uh, plus the the uh, uh, administrative data assessment which I've, I've sent to you. This is supposedly the the. Uh, <coughs> Uh, wh what we thought as the theory of change to the program, essentially the final outcomes are higher graduation rates and higher employment rates. Um, that's, that's the, for any education system, that's the, uh, that's the whole point. I think we can, uh, uh, that's not too much, so I don't, I don't know if you bring up an issue here, but that's the way we arrange it. And we tried to look at some of the components of this in the assessment. Okay, so. For data collection, we used a uh, desk review of whatever uh, subset are uh, limited data and sometimes data are inconsistent even from two different sources. We, do the, uh, we did key format and this is the way we quickly uh, assess what the implementers are feeling about the program. And uh, we also collect administrative data from CHED and wherever and from uh, national surveys. But the other thing that we did, because we did, there was no data readily available that's uh, updated enough, we have to do our own live survey for our, for some uh, selected uh, higher education institutions, but uh, most uh, some of them are friends of the president. And, and uh, basically we did our own data collection just to get you an, uh, some, some idea on, on what, what's happening to enrollment. That's very skilly the issue. Okay, so this is the, finally, uh, after the about seven months of doing this, the above we were able to talk to 18 organizations, uh, 13 ECIs, university, one univers uh, four university associations, one key stakeholders, and this is distribution across uh, the ge geography. Okay, the results. So, in terms of program logic, this is the first uh, item. The, the understanding of the law is, seems to be, uh, everybody seems to understand what the law is all about. Uh, that provide greater access to quality tertiary education. Okay, so that's the everybody have that. Then, but there are other. Uh, uh, when you ask them about are these objectives realistic and achievable, uh, uh, the respondents uh, generally believe that the objectives of the law are access, uh, of to increase access is achievable and realistic. Uh, it is dependent upon ever whether we can sustain the budget, as we all know. Uh, uh, it's not easy to be uh, for how many billions of pesos to be recurring in the national budget. So from other, uh, from the others noted that the lower income classes may be disadvantaged for the same reason that maybe the you need to if your uh, the agreement was public schools will not increase the number of seats. Okay, we maintain without the approval of chair. That's the the. So uh, that means that everyone has to compete for those free seats, uh, free tuition seats. So if you have to compete, uh, how do you compete? You compete according to academic performance, and you think the low and in lower income people will be able to do that against the more advantaged uh, colleagues. So that's, that's basically that the people feel that uh, maybe the uh, lower income will be at a disadvantage uh, which actually torpedoes the idea that it gives them ac the, the poor access with this kind of law. Okay. So here's the some assessment uh, achievable uh, is the issue of equity. So you, you can find uh, this is the data from APIS. So from 2011 and 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 I think the second uh, income quintile is well represented. It's about 20 percent, but the bottom. Uh, there's a little bit of increase in, 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 in 
I, I don't know if that will will be sustained, but the will you know the bottom twenty is not rep uh, well represented in in the enrollment. So that's 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 the uh, the uh, what you can get from the data. Uh, uh, for the, this, this is for the this is for the public uh, universities. I I, I I should say. Uh, um, then for the private, of course, that's uh, sorry. Private, of course, that's even lower. Uh, uh, the proportions of, of the poor uh, bottom twenty, uh, four, uh, 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 bottom forty is even lower uh, in private, which is understandable. Okay, so that, that's uh, so we're uh, watching these these proportions as we go along in, in the implementation of the law, assuming that we get the same. Okay, so. Uh, so some of the respondents were concerned that, that in the uh, objective of maintaining and improving quality of education will, might be hampered. Uh, it's not. Uh, uh, that's the the idea. And the amount of budget to operationalize the four components of the law uh, is to perceived to be critical uh, in intent in, in achieving the objectives. So it depends upon can we sustain the budget allocation that the program requires. Is that are there, uh, we asked them, are there better approaches to achieve the same objective? Some suggested that there may be b better objectives of, of, of the law, uh, achieving the objectives of the law. One, so improve the invest in public education to increase the chances of the low income. Uh, uh, so basically, it's more like uh, encourage targeting because the next one says that those who can pay are encouraged to pay. There are actually people uh, who are willing to pay for their education. And so, lo and behold, the government says we pay for you. So that's that's the so <coughs> decentralized the assessment of potential beneficiaries. It's a, and there's uh, I think one of the slow moving uh, and problem prone areas is the implementation of the TS because it requires targeting, requires uh, identification of the re, uh, of the right beneficiaries, and realign the funds from the free uh, free tuition part to the TS if we have to increase the the uh, the access of the poor and and uh, of course the for the other functions with universities there might be that all money for tertiary education will go into free tuition so maybe the other function with universities might suffer uh, in the process and for the third second component uh, the on service delivery and utilization the insights of the guidelines are uh, says uh, the the guidelines were re uh, delayed in uh, re delayed so delay guidelines mean delays implementation because nobody can move without the guidelines and some were very clear and uh, not very clear and incomplete so it some come how the guidelines comes in installment Ma majority of the respondents both public noted that most of the guidelines released at very tight schedules and some and and and, and uh, of course you have enrollment Targets and uh, no, no, no mean dates, as I should say that, and uh, and the students cannot meet the requirements right away. So when you cannot meet the requirement, you cannot get the 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 uh, benef benefits. Okay. Now uh, all respondents realize that these issues and challenges of the implementations are are burden based. That we're just in the first year, so we we grant that uh, these are issues of a uh, new program, a very large program. So these are burden pains. Hopefully, we can address this. So that's 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 the that's the general consensus of the respondents. Uh, the problems with reimbursement and miscellaneous fees, uh, the, uh, what constitutes that what are reimbursable fees is also an issue. It's not very clear. And uh, so the, so what, co uh, what, what will constitute part of the free tuition, and because it's not tuition, but also fees, that's not clear. And, 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 that's <coughs> and, and hampers implementation as well. And then there was uh, controversy on what should be covered. All respondents also acknowledge that the issues and the challenges of limitations are part of the, the same thing that that they said. So we, they are forgiving. Uh, the yeah, the suffer the the voice their their uh, their uh, their issues, but they are forgiving at, at this point. Uh, of course, uh, 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 that's ha the way we look at uh, the the way what this, what they tell us. So the universe noted that there are uh, uh, they were able to convene uh, resources uh, that they were able to convene resources uh, from technical groups, but 
there, there is a lack of technical. The, I think the UNIFAS board has mentioned that the lack, the not, not just the number of the personnel, but the technical capacity. They lack in both. Uh, I think there was an issue that maybe uh, just mentioned sometime that they have the uh, items in their organizations, but those items are, ne are not filled. All personnel are contractual. That's 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 the and. Uh, Besides that, the, the technical capacity of, of handling a very large program is, is an issue. Even that, even the, 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 you have mentioned that. Okay, so in terms of allocation, is the the uh, gives you all the idea of the process. Forty percent is in uh, uh, is in the free higher education, meaning free tuition. Another f uh, forty percent is in the TES. So seven billion goes to. Uh, 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 free technical and vocational education, I think this should be looked at because uh, TESDA has been implementing only uh, like 2 billion size programs. This is three times their size in terms of, of program. So I don't know how they will deliver this. Somebody has to look at it or, uh, and how, how it was delivered. We, we, we were not able to do that. And 1 billion for, for loans. So this is the, uh, this is the prioritization of the uh, total amount of, uh, I forget the number, but that's, that's the Okay, so status of implementation as of December uh, 2019 is this, uh, the number of beneficiaries about uh, for free tuition, uh, this is 13.5 uh, uh, for uh, issues, uh, 1.4 for for LUCs, that's that's the so it's all the almost the consumed the amount uh, for uh, uh, the, the I think the the major issues is in in, in TES implementation because it's targeted. It's not as uh, it is more difficult than the other one. When just because when you are when you are in the, uh, admitted to the to the SUC, you get the subsidy. But here you have to identify the. Uh, up to the, I think, the middle of last year, we were even asked to help them identify more uh, beneficiaries because there are a lot of slots that's remaining uh, in the in the in the program and not not being used. So uh, there's somehow issues in identifying the 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 beneficiaries. So there's also a a confusion because the law says listahanan. And it doesn't uh, somehow distinguish between being in the list of and being eligible for four piece. Actually, I think the intention of the law is for four piece beneficiaries. If you are a four piece beneficiary, you get uh, and you are enrolled in a private university. You are uh, you're the first priority for the TES. But the law says list of Hanan. It doesn't say that eligible for four piece. So that created a confusion. There are some s and uh, Unifast didn't somehow and get that well in terms of the implementation. So they have, but of course, they, when they, when they implemented it, they asked DSW to give them the list, of the list, of course, DSW to give them, the, not the list of Hanan, but the list of four piece beneficiaries, uh, our households to have four. So that created a, a problem as well. And uh, this, this, this is the performance for, for the TES, or for the SGPPA who are continuing students is the, the priority uh, the beneficiaries. Then uh, uh, the other set of uh, that's about uh, what, uh, 13, 14,000. Then you have there's uh, this uh, private schools where there is no issues. Remember that if there is an issue, you can go as a front. So you have uh, if you have in an area where there's an issue, the, the private school supposedly are the priority of students of private schools in those areas are also priority. It's about 71,000. 7,071,000 7, students in December. And listahan and two, this is the uh, next about 147, uh, 40, 48,000. Then grantees again, additional, this is I think the second round. So you have unfilled slots and all of that. So about 300,000 uh, uh, students. Uh, and uh, we have four PWDs and uh, uh, those with uh, graduating with in board courses, so that's the other group of, of uh, guarantees for the TES. Uh, remember, TES for private schools. So, 
there's an issue over the where the funds should be launched. That's that's one of the things, and for Billy and the respondents did not want that to undergo the uh, cumbersome supposedly billing process. That's the the, the idea. You build the uh, you build chat for for those students, and uh, it's it's AI that uh, uh, prefer that they, they be given flexibility in terms of where to spend because uh, it. It depends upon where it will be will come in and whether they can spend it or not. Particularly for public uh, universities, where there are TES, uh, uh, also we 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 one of the things that we argued is that the poor students are not only in public uh, private universities; they are also in private public universities. So since they are only getting tuition in 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 uh, private. Uh, uh, I public universities, maybe they should be eligible also for the uh, living allowance part. Uh, so the satisfactions we said is uh, of the implementation is mixed. Some said that they are satisfied with the program. Uh, I just stated the satisfactions implementation of the program, particularly on the billing. So basically, it's about uh, who are uh, when the when the students are, are actually identified, the, the trying to reimburse. For the students, is, is as difficult. Of course, as I've said, this is the first year of implementation. We expect all of us, and and people are somewhat forgiving that this that's the case. Okay, uh, so in program organization, we ask them about whether do you have to adjust your systems in order to accommodate the the program, and many say that no, they don't. Uh, uh, I think uh, that kind of of uh, nah, of. Uh, Maybe we are wait and see attitudes, or maybe they think that maybe this this is not a long term program anyway. We don't have to rearrange our system. So basic. So both the public and and private CIs mentioned that they will be maintaining the quality of education. That's the that's the that's the uh, uh, they will maintain the admission standards. That means that they're not waive uh, even if you are eligible for that. They're not waive you, you pass, uh, which we were grateful. You have to pass the admission requirements of the university. Public universities means adjusting higher to higher demand, so that's base. Yeah, uh, that's actually the that the the influx of uh, of more students going to public universities, and and that's that's the that's what what we expect, and uh, I, I hope that the public universities will maintain their, their quality standards in terms of admissions, meaning that uh, we are sh making sure that the students will finish their program uh, uh, when they enter the, enter the university, not just avail of the free tuition. We, the, uh, they said that the associations were heavily consulted. And uh, the other thing that we mentioned, that this is very common, I already mentioned, I think I mentioned it in the Senate hearing today, that uh, we all have good intentions, but we never really check whether those intentions are, are achieved or not by our programs. We don't invest in doing that. We just, uh, uh, the only thing that, uh, so the, uh, the same. So this, the same for this program. There is no really dedicated monitoring system that will tell us what's happening. That's why it's very difficult to find a syst uh, comprehensive data set that will tell us what's happened. So the only thing that, as I've said, uh, you have to use the influence of our president to get to you presidents of universities just to get data. So that, 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 so there's no real program as big as this, or even in the other programs that have, I'll, I'll be mentioned. I uh, will mention earlier, monitoring is very poor. Uh, you just said that because you have done it, expect it to happen, something. You never really check what happened in, on, on the ground. That's which is a very, uh, uh, which is a very big assumption to make. Okay, so let's try to analyze, we try to analyze what's the impact of enrollment. This is a very important thing because I said this access is the one. Some public universities have a higher number of applicants and enrollees, so that's, that, there's, that, that's one of the uh, private noted negative impact on their enrollment, which is also expected, and, 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 and are concerned about the potential negative impact on the future. It's, it's actually a, no one's way that uh, if all the brighter students go to public universities, the only thing that's left for private universities are the, uh, are the less able ones, because they will would like to go to public university where tuition is free. So the other respondents uh, are skeptical. They said that uh, pre pe people prefer, uh, have preference over public over private, so they will always go to wherever they prefer. That's, that's one view as well. So those are the views that we got on field. 
Okay, so what's the data? So this is the enrollment, total enrollment in, in from, from CHED. So of course we, we have a, a decline in enrollment uh, because of the senior high school implementation. And so that's, so it, it created a rebound a little bit from 2018 to 29. And the pattern that we are getting is that the public universities are uh, 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 getting the, the previous enrollment better than the private universities. So they're slow in coming in private universities. So that's, that's what we actually observe. This is the uh, uh, first year. This is the total enrollment. This is the first year enrollment from the universities that we that we were able to to uh, to get. It's very difficult to get the just data on first year enrollment. So we use the data from PIDS online survey, and this is the pattern. So you see that the jump back of the public sector is faster than the private sector, which is to be so both of them uh, are, are regaining their enrollment, but not as as uh, the uh, private public sector is getting a little better than them. Okay, so uh, the in summary, they said that the respondents are, uh, have a good understanding of the intentions of the law, although the, uh, uh, there is mixed opinion on whether these, these objectives are realistic or achievable. That's, that's, you know, that's the, uh, for service deliberatization, the main issue is regarding the uh, utilization and, and, and uh, all, all the funds and lack of, of clear guidelines. That's, that's the, uh, and they said that the people are forgiving and said that these are birthing pains and hopefully it will go away in, in the next few years. So that's, that's, that's the general mode of the people. And the main implementer of the program, the UNIFAST, cited lack both personnel and, and, and capacity. So that's, that's, that's what the, so you have, Interesting, a very big program to an uh, understaffed uh, 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 office, and the plant client implementers uh, that di did not require major adjustments as yet. That's, uh, I don't know how how to interpret that, but that's what they're saying. They don't have to re uh, reassemble their uh, systems in order to 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 accommodate the program. And. Uh, the enrollment, as we, as we expected, are, are, are at the, have declined because of senior high school, and it's rebound. And the, the, the public schools are are, are uh, better able to gain the their previous enrollment than the private schools. So, if you would look at that to the trend of declining uh, private school shares in enrollment, that should be uh, that would even widen the gap. I, I think that that explains the. Uh, the data that we get from APIS, there's a lar very large jump in the share of the public universities. So uh, the first, of course, is that uh, in any program, uh, if we want to know what's happening, we should have a, mon a very clear monitoring system. We just, we should not uh, trust that our intentions will be, will be achieved by themselves. Uh, I, I have a very uh, nice parody for this. Uh, we said that uh, in God we trust. Everybody else should bring data. So th that's 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 first one. Uh, leverage the subsidy to promote higher. That's the other thing that we were. Hopefully we are spending a lot of money here, and we can use it to to promote quality. So one of the things that we should not be very loose in giving subsidy, but we should try to target subsidy to improve quality of education. We already have problems in, sub in, 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 in our uh, higher education system. We know that we c our passing rates in, po in professional board exams is always 40%, never gone far from that proportion. So 60% of our graduates cannot practice, of those who are board uh, cannot practice their professions. Uh, look, uh, ways for the uh, to promote compliance and quality standards, if we if we said it's just access but quality as well, then we have to make that uh, 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 the compliance and quality standards to be uh, important. Uh, the issues and issues have to be really monitored whether the the keep on the premise of uh, of not going beyond their. Uh, it is to their advantage that they will go beyond their capacities because they are just reimbursed, right? So that's. So there is a motivation for doing that. They promise that they will not increase the number of seats unless approved by CHED. So we should monitor whether that's, that's, that's really uh, um, followed or not. Uh, we should uh, help 
uh, Unifast do its job by, by providing uh, the correct organizational support. You cannot just hope that they will do their jobs well when they are understaffed. And uh, we don't even know the, quali the, the, the capacity. They express already the need for capacity. And uh, uh, for all of this, and, and, and the mon uh, we, we should uh, maximize use of technology to, 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 to help us uh, monitor this uh, very big program, very important program, and we're spending a lot of money. Uh, they should be open. Uh, if we are seeing that the uh, that the program uh, is is not achieving the equity objective, we should be open to redesigning the program. Uh, uh, in terms, for instance, that uh, maybe we should encourage some more people who are really willing to pay. As I've said, that the people in private uh, in issues who are used uh, who, who used to be paying tuition actually uh, do it in their own volition, why, why do we refuse that kind of money? So if they encourage the opt-out, if that can be encouraged, but I don't know, maybe we should re resign now if, if we see, I, which we, uh, many people are expecting that this would uh, be working against equity. Uh, so the, the TES is a good program, but it all depends on whether we target uh, it correctly or not. Because that's that's the intention of the program to give access to uh, poor uh, students. So, but if you don't target, if you don't hit them, then uh, that's that would, there goes the 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 intention. Aim to uh, if you have guidelines on a little bit more, and hopefully, as I've said, we by next few years we will stabilize the implementation of the program and see really what what what's happening. I think. Uh, the other issue on miscellaneous fees, what should be covered by the tuition and miscellaneous fees, uh, that should be clarified. Uh, the misconception about the targeting and the listahana. Listahana is not all poor people, but uh, only the Pantawid beneficiaries are poor, supposedly poor people. Um, uh, calibrate the timing, so basically this timing and, and of the uh, deadlines and all of that for implementation. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah.